I'm Dr. Rudy Cashman, neurosurgeon in Fort Wayne, Indiana for 44 years, who recently retired on July 1, and I'm now the medical wellness director uh, at uh, Lutheran Hospital, fulfilling uh, my passion on wellness, as you're well aware from previous shows and books that I've written. Tonight, uh, we have a very interesting subject. Uh, about 15 years ago, I wrote a book called The Call of Life. It has in it the 20 prescriptions that lead to good life. It, in a way, it's a behavioral cord, code, uh, but it's about education, it's about proper eating, it's about proper behavior, and it's not sectarian. Uh, so. Uh, that it doesn't violate any church state issues. Uh, my prescriptions are posted in, in about five different public places uh, in uh, uh, Fort Wayne uh, and uh, the Unity Performing Arts Choir, the well-known choir that's made themselves famous. Uh, they have these memorized. I noticed at a recent concert, the Michael Jackson concert, even graduates uh, who were put on stage unknowing that Marshall White was going to test them <laughs> still mem remembered them. So this is uh, uh, very interesting. The introduction of that book actually is written uh, by my friend, uh, attorney uh, Phil Terrell, who is here visiting us tonight. So, and I'm still appreciative of uh, what he did. And what I'm trying to respond uh, to uh, the uh, couple of problems here. Number one is health. Uh, we have a tremendous rates of acquired diseases from what we're eating. I mean, the, the Americans in general are eating the mad, sad, toxic American diet, uh, and, and we're being uh, just have tremendous diabetes rates, tremendous stroke rates, tremendous cancer rates, all that could essentially be avoided if they're eating correctly. Number two is we're having a problem, obviously, with violence. You pick up the newspapers from Chicago, South Bend, uh, Indiana, Fort Wayne, and obviously what's going on, we, we must do s something. Uh, and uh, and, and it's my opinion uh, that these 20 prescriptions that I wrote over 15 uh, years ago uh, would cover that field very well. I mean, the Uniforming Arts Choir have these memorized, and I say to you, why couldn't all our students have these uh, memorized? I even have uh, them uh, written uh, in a coloring book for little children. Uh, the, and, and Dan Lynch, a famous uh, cartoonist for the Journal Gazette, uh, uh, did that uh, years ago. Uh, it would be a way of teaching it to little children. I like to, uh, the, the mayor uh, is really for this, um, but it's difficult to penetrate the school system. There's no question about it. I've been there, but, but the mayor, I think, is going to have his picture taken in front of the, a statue uh, that you see in the book that's in front of the criminal justice building, I think, uh, and, and, and him and I and, and, and the head of the NAACP, uh, Dr. Bledsoe, we're going to have, have a picture taken and maybe hopefully the newspaper could help uh, uh, spread a story and we could start pushing this into the community, creating really uh, a, uh, the good life, a culture uh, of, of, of wellness and, and behavior. We need to change. Uh, uh, obviously, this is not going to be solved by taking the guns away. That's not going to do it. Uh, but we could change our behavior of everyone, starting with little children and adults. And that's what this show really is all about. And, uh, and thank you so much for watching. I think you're going to love this. So let's go through these 20 prescriptions. Uh, and I hope to make it through all 20 of them in this, in this uh, one hour. Number one here is treat others as you would like to be treated. Uh, that's that's uh, uh, number one. So. Uh, I'm going to give you a couple of quotes here. So I set out to be a friend, but I couldn't find one. But once I became a friend, friends were everywhere. In my experience as a physician for these 44 years, uh, I've always been a little bit proud of my ability to, to uh, uh, make a friend out of every patient. That inclu includes people of all walks of life, all colors, all races, all cultures, including prisoners. Generally, I saw a prisoner from the county jail. Time he left my room, really, I think he thought I was his friend and would like to meet me again. So that we all should. Uh, kindness begets kindness. Uh, that's a point. Believe me, and I faced all these 44 years people of many different cultures. Some didn't speak any English. They were from Europe. They were from here involved in accidents or came and had a brain hemorrhage or something. Uh, uh, and and, and uh, 
Uh, I even have a special relationship with the Amish people. I've met many of them. I've made house calls on them to learn their culture. Uh, and uh, and I've, I've had many great uh, meetings uh, uh, with, uh, with them. Uh, and uh, so, uh, so be a friend. And, and, and uh, if I meet a stranger on an elevator, I usually say hello uh, to make them feel more uh, comfortable, to make them more comfortable. Uh, I had a, a nurse years ago, unfortunately, moved in Annapolis, six foot six, black gentleman with long hair. He was the most beloved employee I ever had. He made a friend out of everyone. And you know what it was? His soft voice. He had a very soft voice. Uh, if I had, I've had two or 3,000 phone calls since he's left me. I've had other employees uh, where I had maybe two or three. And uh, so uh, uh, a soft voice, uh, maybe a touch the shoulder, uh, and, and, and to be kind uh, to a, a stranger. Uh, Otis Archie, my friend, uh, the uh, uh, sheriff from Marion County, now retired, uh, uh, who was on my behavioral board that I had, uh, and we dealt with the 20 prescriptions. Uh, uh, prisoners were never felt threatened by him. Uh, he was kind to them. So he received uh, kindness back and uh, uh, do some random acts of kindness. You see strangers, you see somebody impaired, you see somebody can't get in a car. Uh, I think kindness is, uh, so constant kindness can accomplish much. As the sun makes the ice melt, kindness causes misunderstandings, mistrust, and hostility to evaporate. That's a quote from Albert Schweitzer, you know, famous physician, uh, 1910 or so, uh, who spent most of his time uh, in Africa. Uh, it's a quote from him. I think this is, uh, uh, I think, it very important, and this is a very important uh, pres prescription. We'd sure have a lot better world uh, if we uh, did this. Number two, my prescription is uh, be honest, don't lie, cheat or steal, make your word your bond. I mean, how important uh, uh, it is that? Uh, and because uh, if you're, you're not honest, uh, uh, people are not going to believe you the next time. You're going to have difficulty at work, difficulty making uh, uh, friends. Uh, so honesty is the first chapter in the Book of Wisdom. You have to be, uh, to be honest. A gentleman is one who keeps his promises to those who cannot enforce them, who cannot enforce them. I think a good point. J. Edgar Hoover, the famous FBI agent who is not living now, but he did it over 40 years. Uh, I'm going to give a quote from him. Above all, I would teach them to tell the truth. Truth telling, I have found, is the key to personal responsibility of our citizenship. The thousands of criminals I've seen in 40 years of law enforcement have had one thing in common. Every single one of them did not speak the truth. So I think this is a very important uh, quote from him. Uh, and in my doctor-patient relationships, it, it was very important uh, that uh, the patients trusted my opinion, uh, that I gave them choices, that you could, well, you could get better by losing weight or exercising, or uh, you, you need an operation, and, and I notice you have type 2 diabetes and you're overweight, and I will teach you with that, after we finish the operation, uh, you come to me for a year or so and I teach you how to reverse uh, these serious health problems you had. You see, they trusted me they, and they came back. One monthly visit. I didn't even charge them for it. And I, and I got them uh, uh, well. So developing an honest relationship, in, in, like in my work or at, at your place of work or with your children. Uh, you have to be very honest with your children and ask your children uh, to be honest uh, with you. If you know they're lying about what they're doing in school, you have to be very strict, very quickly strict. I notice my dear friend Phil Terrell here, and I know how he raised his children, and I've listened to stories, he, he, he and he raised them by himself. He just did a wonderful job, and he was very strict with them, very strict with them. And uh, it can be overbearing, uh, but you have to have standards. He constantly had standards uh, that the children had to obey. And I compliment him uh, for that. And all of us had different experiences with that. And, uh, uh, and if, if we're wrong about something that 
uh, we said, and, and, and we can always admit we're wrong and admit it, admit, admit the faults. I'm sorry, I, I, I misspoke. Uh, you can always apologize. So honesty is the foundation of all relationships. You plan to have a good marriage. You plan to have a good relationship with your children, your employer. You, you have to be honest. And, uh, and cheating will cause a loss of self-respect yourself. Your brain knows if you lied. Your brain knows if you lied. And, and your brain will look at yourself differently. Uh, you become fearful, you're anxious, difficulty uh, sleeping. You lose your self-respect. So your brain understands uh, there's a sub you have a conscience within any of us. Most people have one at least. Uh, it, it'll react to that. Certainly we've met a few who don't have one. So uh, 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 Shakespeare had a quote here said, if I lose my honor, I lose my self-respect. It's a quote from uh, Shakespeare. Uh, so uh, honesty sh should be central to your life and uh, uh, that prescription uh, should be inst was instilled in me by my father in my church. Oh, yeah. I and mean, we all have, you know, uh, my father worked day, day and night. And if I say he had two great qualities, uh, he died at age 90. He worked like anything, took care of his family. We always lived in a, in a good place, although we couldn't afford it. Uh, 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 and he was 100% honest. 100% honest to, to his customers. He even sold groceries to his customers in his New York deli on credit. Who ever heard of anything like that? And, uh, and uh, uh, I always thought I was poor as a child. Well, I happen to be dead wrong about it uh, because I lived three blocks from the Metropolitan of Art in New York City. And whoever could think, I mean, what better place could you possibly live? Right by the park. And, uh, and we, uh, I'm very thankful uh, uh, for that. And I'm very thankful to my mother for sending me to church. And I'm not saying you gotta go to church. I'll be honest with you, what's church all about? I heard it discussed on, on, on television the other day. What's church all about? The children. They asked the priest that. Uh, and uh, uh, why are we having some uh, declining uh, memberships in, in ch churches? In, and uh, how could we increase memberships in, in the churches in the United States. You know what the priest said? He never said a word. He went like this. Children, it's about children. Very important that your children realize there's something bigger than themselves. No matter what the church, no matter what the faith, I'm not pushing anyone religion, and I'm not even pushing religion, but I'm telling you, your kids are gonna do better if someone teaches them a conscience, and that's what my church uh, uh, did for me. My mother just pushed me at the church. I don't think my, my father even very, very much. I'm not sure she even went that much, but I went. So, uh, uh, I went to all the, you know, uh, important things we had to do and what our, our faith requested. I think it's very important to develop a conscience. So uh, uh, let's go to number three. And uh, uh, treat life with care. Avoid risky behavior. Uh, being a neurosurgeon, of course, I, I constantly uh, saw the results uh, of uh, uh, risky behavior uh, and uh, accidents I, I treated all the time. Uh, so courage is an, almost a contradiction in terms of, it means a strong desire to live taking the form of uh, readiness uh, to die. Courage is resistance to fear, but uh, it's not an absence of fear. And I see a lot of risky behavior. People driving when they're drunk, that causes 80% of the uh, accidents. Uh, uh, we see uh, people smoking and taking, dr and taking drugs. That's certainly risky behavior. We have in our brain a dopamine circuitry uh, that secretes serotonin and dopamine that makes us feel good. Uh, what can do it? Alcohol, marijuana, uh, uh, cigarettes, drugs, the biggest thing of all, actually most addictive, eating bad food. Fat, salt, and sugar is the most uh, addictive of all. That's risky behavior. If you eat that way, you're going to become obese, get diabetes, hypertension, maybe die at a young age. Uh, and uh, seat belts should be worn. Texting is ridiculous. I saw in the paper the other day that uh, the very few arrests from texting, but again, the other day I saw a teenager ran up in a curve, almost killed somebody, and, and she was texting. 
uh, and uh, it had happened to me walking out of a fast food restaurant. I looked left, I looked right, saw nobody, went straight ahead, and bang, a TJ went by, almost killed me. Uh, t uh, texting is certainly risky behavior. Uh, Internet dating is ris risky behavior. We've seen the results of that, including deaths. Uh, uh, sex is risky uh, uh, behavior. Uh, uh, and, and, and we could talk about that, obviously, for an hour. But uh, one third of uh, the college students uh, uh, in many of the colleges around here in the state have a sexual uh, disease. And they have it as evidence all over their body. Uh, and, and uh, no less that you could uh, become pregnant. Uh, and uh, if you, you, you want to go into poverty, uh, have a child as a 16, 15, 14 year old, uh, the odds of being poor is extremely high. Uh, so to get control of the sexual impulse, uh, very uh, important. You got to teach the kids, they got to know all about it. Uh, and then the kids themselves have to listen uh, b because you can totally ruin your life right then and there. You, you don't have the money to go to college, tough to get a career, uh, and, uh, and the n number of diseases you can get, which, which can, you can get AIDS. You could even die from the darn thing, no less uh, have evidence of the sexual diseases in any part of your body. You know, yeah. uh, Three-wheelers, motorcycles, no helmets, uh, skydiving. You know, people think it's cute, uh, you know, to jump off a mountain and do a somersault and uh, the little parachute opens up. Well, I'll tell you, you're taking a risk. Did you read in the paper uh, just yesterday uh, where this uh, uh, lovely lady uh, fell uh, uh, at, at a uh, park uh, uh, out of a, uh, a wheel thing? And, and of course, if you look at the darn thing, it's very risky. Uh, uh, and uh, she fell straight down and died. So anytime you're in the air, uh, things can go wrong. Things can go wrong, and you must look at the consequences of it, jumping off bridges and things that, that, would, that we uh, 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 feel. Uh, and uh, uh, driving fast in a car, uh, for example, at a high speed, uh, you slip, you're on the ice, hit a tree, uh, you may be dead. You may be quadriplegic. You may be paralyzed in your legs. You may die. And I've treated all those conditions, paraplegia, quadriplegia, head injuries. I'm sorry, your 16-year-old is going to die. And, I mean, the kid's dead. Okay? You don't, you don't uh, at that point, realize what's happened to you, but your parents will grieve forever. They will grieve forever. Believe me, I've lived through it. Uh, so bicycles, wear helmets. Riding a bicycle on, on a regular street runs a risk. 10% of the people going by you are on drugs, alcohol, uh, uh, maybe can see very well. Uh, and, uh, and jogging there, riding a bike on a regular street is risky. Pick a bike, bike path at least and wear a helmet at all, at all uh, uh, times. Uh, obesity uh, is a health risk. If you're way overweight, type 2 diabetes, hypertension, you could have a sudden heart attack and die. I see it all the time. See strokes at a very young, at a very young age. That's all risky uh, 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 behavior. Uh, guns in the home uh, are risky. It's not an anti-gun statement. It's just it's risky. About 10,000 kids die from gun injuries every year. A lot of them are accidents. They got into the gun cabinet. Uh, they were playing uh, with the weapon. You, you see it in the paper. Uh, and uh, it, it's, it's, it's risky behavior. Do what you like, but uh, you bring uh, you, you bring guns on home, you got six kids running around, you better have them locked up pretty darn good because accidents uh, could, could happen. I see accidents from wave runners, uh, people going behind uh, wave runners and skiing, uh, uh, and uh, uh, the force of it. Uh, I've, seen, I've seen horrible accidents to women, that their insides torn out or become infected, can't have children after that. Uh, I've seen it, it's the torsion forces to your brain. See, the brain is three pounds of fat. Uh, and if you have enough torsion forces, you can tear the blood vessels. I saw an injury like that last year. Nothing ever hit her head, but came to the hospital with a bruised up brain, and, and, and I thought this, people thought she had a ruptured aneurysm. Actually, it was the torsion forces uh, of uh, water skiing uh, that had done it, that, that had done it. And it took us a while actually to figure it out because I had, hadn't been hit with anything. Fortunately, it survived, but 30, 40 years from now, I bet it's a price called memory. And uh, so, uh, I think we've spoken enough about uh, risky behavior. Number four, practice showing respect for authority, parents, teachers, police, and government. Uh, we see a lot in the papers today where someone picks an altercation with a person in authority. Let's start with the home. Show respect to your parents even uh, if you don't exactly like what they're doing. They drink too much, they're smoking too much, uh, uh, and, and, and they're still your parents. They're still your parents. That doesn't mean you generally can say, hey, why do you smoke outside? Or maybe this, this uh, uh, 
uh, alcohol problem uh, is killing your dad. I mean, okay, but, but still respect them in spite of their bad uh, uh, habits. Uh, and you can always uh, uh, complain if you have a problem with the authority, for example. You can always write a letter or look, look up their supervisors later. But to pick an argument on the street during an accident with a police officer of the law is a stupid mistake. He, he's in charge. She's in charge. They are in charge. You must respect the, the position. Respect the position. Just with the government. Uh, we have the elected officials. We don't always agree with them. That's democracy. That's democracy. They don't have to agree with us. Somebody else voted for them. But sh at least show them respect of office. And then if you don't like what they're doing, demonstrate. Uh, back a candidate to beat them out of office. Do something about it. Uh, but don't spend all day complaining about somebody who's been duly elected. I learned that really from the movie Lincoln. You see, Lincoln di uh, didn't uh, really get, get uh, all these great civil rights laws passed uh, just by being a nice guy. He coached or he negotiated. Uh, you might even say you wonder if he didn't bribe some people and, uh, to get it done, a wonderful thing done. So democracy is about exchange of ideas, and, and you, ha you have to respect the elected individual. It uh, doesn't mean you've got to agree with them, and you can work on that. You can demonstrate. You don't like a war they're going to have? Go demonstrate the courthouse. I did. I didn't like the narcotic laws that were passing in the state for prescriptions. I went down the, down the state house, and I demonstrated. I testified. The only person testified against a watered-down narcotic prescription bill maybe a month ago. My God, I felt like I was in the movie uh, Lincoln. I was the only one. It was a beautiful house in this state. I like to say a very nice thing about in this state. Your representative state, uh, uh, whether it be a senator or representative, uh, are very cooperative. Uh, they're generally a very uh, uh, cooperative. Uh, uh, they will uh, invite you to come down there. They'll allow you to talk. They allow you to write a letter. Uh, and, and, and I had everything I wanted to get done. They even uh, literally put me uh, on, on the stage here with the microphone to, to give my opinion. Uh, much easier to say than the federal government. We've, I've been in D.C. The doors are locked. You've got a hard time getting in. Uh, but in this state, that you can participate in democracy. I did. I, rec I recommend it. Uh, so, uh, but without feelings of respect, what separates us for, uh, from the beasts? We must show people some respect, even if we don't agree with them. And uh, so he's that doesn't respect himself, isn't that respected uh, himself? So uh, uh, if you have some respect for people as they are, you, you, you can be more effective in helping them become better. You're going to do a lot better. Uh, and that's the reason I'm a little upset with the federal government, uh, for example, is, is that they don't want, you know, you can always, uh, if you don't agree with somebody out there, you can always invite them to the White House, put your arm around them, take them to dinner, talk a little bit do some trading, and maybe you can get the job done, get some bills passed instead of this deadlock, you know, that we, uh, uh, that, 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 uh, we look at. So uh, respect authority, your teachers. You may not agree with the teacher who's teaching, but show them respect. You can always complain later. Uh, but in the classroom, you show them respect. You don't at attack them. And, and, uh, and uh, uh, let's look at the next prescription here. Uh, 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 do not let physical or mental abuse go unnoticed. Don't let physical or mental abuse go unnoticed. That's very important. Being a neurosurgeon all these years, I saw many children be beat to death by their, by their parents, yes. Severely injured. Some of these children now are living in nursing homes. Uh, and uh, some are blind, some are deaf, some are paralyzed, uh, and uh, saw it on a regular basis. Uh, the laws are very strict, and the laws are good. Um, matter of fact, they're almost so strong that, that if your child's got a few bruises, you're going to be talking to somebody uh, in authority. Uh, so, uh, but it has to be because there have been so many injured uh, uh, children today. And a lot of this happens because of the stressful families, alcoholism, drugs. Uh, many people are addicted to medications uh, uh, prescribed sometimes uh, by providers. That's fairly rampant. I, uh, Four percent of the children born today are addicted to drugs because their mother uh, is on drugs. A lot of it was done because they were given prescriptions for headaches, neck pain, the stress of life. You get three or four kids, you're meeting a stressful person. That's normal. Uh, and, 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 and women in childbearing ages should not, to me, be given narcotics unless uh, they have a broken leg, or they had a heart attack, or get cancer, but not for neck ache, back ache, some things we don't know what they got, because they could become pregnant 
the pregnancy rate around here of addiction uh, is 4% in a paper published in Michigan in the, in the American Medical Association. In West Virginia, it's 10%. So giving narcotics to, to child-bearing women is a big mistake. Uh, and so if you see physical abuse reported immediately, uh, call 911 uh, or, call, uh, uh, or call the uh, uh, mental health uh, agency because the next thing, that person may be dead. It could be mother, your father, it could be children, it could be a neighbor. You must report physical, mental abuse. It's your obligation. If you don't report it, you're guilty. You're guilty yourself. Uh, I want you to remember that. So uh, uh, it is better to protest than accept injustice or march in front of the uh, courthouse. I've done it. I've done it. And, uh, uh, and I have seen infants uh, where a mother uh, uh, for, uh, uh, lost their child over this a number of times. The father lost their child, uh, and some ended up living in, in nursing homes. It's a common thing. So you got, uh, uh, it's a sin by not stepping up and offering yourself as a witness to something you've heard or seen in cases of wrongdoing, and you'll be held responsible. Leviticus, it's in the Bible. Uh, we see a lot of crime today uh, where the note that so-and-so shot so-and-so, uh, but when police investigate, they won't talk. Well, it's a sin. It's a sin. That person obviously may kill up somebody else. This has to be stopped. Uh, you must report uh, when you see abuse or criminal activity. You don't report it. It, it, uh, it, it, it is uh, really uh, not consistent with civilized uh, behavior. Unfortunately, we see a lot uh, to, like that today. It's better to light a candle than curse the darkness. This will never change unless we step up, uh, unless we step up. Love cannot remain by itself. It has meaning. Love has to be put in, into action. That action is service. So call 911 or the health association you see abuse. Number six is to read a book uh, regularly. Uh, this, I think, is a very uh, big one. I had Gene Landrum, an, uh, an author from Florida. Uh, he uh, uh, has written a number of books, and the you know, first person to really encourage me to write books myself. Uh, and uh, he wrote a section of this in my book, very extensive, and it's very good to read. And this book I uh, wrote, The Call of Life, a very, I think, good book for you to read. You can get it on Amazon. And, uh, uh, and, uh, uh, and, and this is the biggest thing, I think, in the school system. Children must be uh, taught how to read, encouraged, them to read a book because you can be uh, uh, extremely uh, poor. Your parents never take you on a spring vacation, uh, but you can travel by reading. You can go over the world in reading. And there's some good examples in these articles I've written about it. Uh, I read a book about every three days in spite of being a busy neurosurgeon, uh, playing tennis three nights a week, work out uh, three or four days a week at a Panda Fitness or at uh, uh, Spaces over there. I have the time. If I get the time, you get the time. You just have to get in the habit of it. Uh, and and, and uh, it'll expand your knowledge, your, voc your vocabulary, give you ideas, lead to a better job, speak other uh, languages. Uh, you, can, you can read fiction and nonfiction. It's a good stress reliever. They ask women, uh, what, what is the most favorite thing in bed? And you, you know what they said, Phil? Reading a book. <laughs> Reading a book. They did a survey, and uh, so it caused me to become a writer. I write a book on write on because as a guy, I'm a man of ideas. So when I started reading a book and writing a book, in the last page there was uh, there was one word on the, the last page, and I, I'll be forever grateful to that. It said, "Write." <laughs> okay. So if you like to be a writer, you got ideas. We all can be writers, for Pete's sake. You, you just got to read information and get some ideas and put it together. And uh, and uh, now if. 15 bucks. I'll probably have another 10 or another few years. And uh, so uh, good things come in small packages, as Gene Landham uh, would say from Naples. Uh, you know, we hear about Detroit in the news the other day. The city's devastated. It's came bankrupt. You know who came from Detroit? A guy that only had, had really three years of education. Thomas Edison is from Detroit. You know what he did? Uh, you know what he did? Uh, since his parents didn't send him for, for uh, edu become educated? He went to the library and he read it from A to Z. He read the whole library. And of course, 
with this tremendous knowledge, became an inventor. They became an inv in, in, inventor. Uh, interesting story. Uh, so, and you could escape into fantasy. You have a very stressful life, like Oprah, for example, had a very stressful life, very stressful family. Uh, she would go into a closet with a candle and read. That happened to Oprah. I, I heard her say it on, on, on television. It, it, it opened her imagination to possibilities. And look at the great woman uh, that she has uh, become. Madonna goes to her concerts uh, with books. Michael Jordan reads fiction uh, uh, regularly. Uh, it's critical for children to read, but it improves their, their memory, their imagination. Uh, it gives them more ideas what, what they would like to be. It's a stress reliever for them. And I know I have one uh, uh, a grandchild, a, a, a girl who reads all the time. And, and, and my, her college offers are just beyond uh, description because uh, she gets tremendous grades because of it. Uh, and uh, Bill Gates says his favorite hobby is reading. His favorite hobby is uh, a reading, and uh, and uh, and it causes neuroplasticity. We can indeed grow brain cells. That's called neuroplasticity, uh, and uh, and this at any age, at any age. So uh, becomes even more critical as we get older because we lose a few brain cells from getting. Uh, older, but you can avoid all that, and you can increase the size of your brain by reading uh, regularly. And uh, uh, Thomas Carlyle said that had the great man theory, uh, see his bio biography, stories of people's lives, is the coup de grace of learning. Interesting point, to read what other people did. Uh, Alexander the Great, when he traveled, he always uh, imitated the mythology of a, of a a great person on his travels, and he conquered half the world. Not that we necessarily agree that was a good idea, uh, but it was that's uh, the way he uh, did things. He was also very interested in nature. A lot of the foods we eat today, the good foods we ate today, were really brought here by uh, to this to Europe and eventually here by Alexander the Great. So uh, Joe Campbell, a, a great mythologist, uh, wrote a great deal. Uh, about great people, and then when we read about them, uh, we imitate them in, in, in ourselves, improve our lives a great deal. So I highly recommend uh, 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 reading. Uh, and, and lastly, on this reading thing, Gene Landham has written this book, speaks about a, 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 a young boy named Bob Allen who lived in the mountains of Tennessee, uh, and uh, uh, his parents uh, uh, had died, and he was given to the grandparents, and the grandparents gave him the Bible as the only book to read, uh, and never sent him to school. Uh, the school people came to get him, and, and they were met by a shotgun, and, and the grandfather said, he's, he's not going to school. He never did go to school, but he talked grandmother into going to the library, and just like Edison, he, had the li he read the library from A to Z. Guess what? Eventually, when he was tested, uh, when the grandparents died, he, he you know, uh, he uh, tried to go to school or get a get a job. He tried to get a job at the uh, city, uh, and uh, and he had no schooling. They wouldn't hire him. He said, "Well, give me a test." He took a test. We'll find out uh, 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 that uh, he uh, passed everything with flying colors. So he sent him on to college, and he passed all the exams there quickly. Became a Ph.D. and never went to school in his life. Just based on his uh, uh, reading, became a college teacher. Very interesting. Uh, and uh, so when you buy books, it's an escape, it's learning, it's entertainment, it's a gift, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's your life. So reading is extremely important. So let's go on to number seven, be tolerant of others' beliefs. Th that really, frankly, is a big thing to me. That's a big thing to me uh, because uh, uh, I picked up on this many years ago, and especially when I took my neurosurgery training at Georgetown, my wife uh, used to work uh, for, uh, for uh, the Association of Separation of Search and State. I didn't even know what that, what that meant. Uh, but uh, in, in a way, uh, it disappointed some of this. Our great democracy, we respect all religions. That's what makes us so different. That makes us so different that we don't look down on anybody else's uh, religion. If we lose any of that, our democracy will be gone because we'll have perhaps some radical group take the whole country over. It could happen. So I think it's very important to tolerate other people's uh, beliefs. You can have your, your own religion, and it's, it, it, the law is with you. It's, a, 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 I think, a great thing, 
I really truly uh, believe in this. So if we cannot end our differences, at least we can help make the world a safer place uh, for diversity. That's actually uh, a quote from John F. Kennedy. Yes, there's a quote from John F. Kennedy, and it's a great quote. If we cannot end our differences, at least we can help make the world safe for diversity. That's what I suggest for the wars we have going on in, in Afghanistan, in Iraq, and Iran, and, 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 and uh, two or three other countries, Syria, uh, and, and this biggest thing. We're not going to change them to be like us, but at least we can get them to respect the diverse cultures uh, where we've had a problem in Iraq. There are too many different cultures, they're not respecting each other, and this is what we need to teach. Uh, instead of maybe starting another war, which I saw on the radio today, they're thinking of doing. Uh, uh, I'd much rather would have them work on this other angle, teaching different cultures to get along, which includes uh, Egypt, of course. And uh, so, uh, it's a good thing uh, to demand uh, our, ourselves for, for uh, what you agree with us, but it's a better thing uh, and a rare thing to, to uh, uh, teach, uh, to respect other people's ideas and not necessarily convert them to what we believe, uh, but to uh, discuss issues with them instead of starting fights and wars. So to know oneself is wisdom, but to know one's neighbor is genius. Respect them, what they believe in understand their religion, understand their culture. Uh, and uh, so this, what is this country? A melting pot. Uh, it's a melting pot. We have a pluralistic society, and what a wonderful thing. And a uh, matter of fact, I would suggest for Detroit, maybe the thing, if the thing doesn't work, maybe bring in a whole bunch of immigrants. Maybe they'll make it work uh, instead of just letting it uh, decay. That's just my idea. Uh, uh, let's face it. Uh, all these decades are going by, the, the things we've had because of a lack of diversity and respect for religion and, and, and with culture. Matter of fact, I was on a committee at Gulf Coast University in Florida uh, before the first war that we had with Iraq and Iran, and uh, uh, with uh, Iraq, and there were about 10 of us on there, and it was my idea uh, to teach diversity, bring 25,000 students from the Middle East, give them a college education, and send them back and teach them diversity. That was my idea. The student body met on that, uh, and I got a letter three months later. That was the, the idea the student body picked. No war. Let's teach diversity. Interesting. I'm not saying it would have worked, but I'm just saying that was my idea, and that's what I promote. Because I've been, obviously, my age, I've been through it. September 11th, I've lived in Germany with the Nazis, and then we've been through the Middle East and the Korean thing, the Second World War, uh, the, the uh, Korean War, now Iraq and Iran, and maybe Syria coming up. Uh, the, the, I, I, believe me, I've been through it. And I'm not sure guns, uh, guns, I don't think, are the answer to this. Although at times, like the Second World War, it was necessary. It was necessary. And uh, so, uh, uh, it, so tolerance, I think, is extremely uh, important. So uh, the, the official recognition of, of, of the rights of an individual and groups to hold uh, different opinions uh, on religion and culture, uh, that's the definition of culture. Of, uh, of tolerance, I think is very uh, important. Uh, let's switch to uh, uh, number eight. Uh, express uh, honor, uh, love, respect uh, for your family. Uh, I think is an extremely uh, uh, important thing. No matter what your family members are doing, you got to show a certain amount of respect. Uh, and, then, and if there are problems, uh, work with them. Uh, you know best that that you can. Uh, and uh, uh, the. Uh, I was the same kind of father as I was a harpist. I played by the ear, is a quote from Harpo Marx. <laughs> so express honor, love, and respect for your family. You, you know the, the only uh, people who are uh, always sh uh, sure uh, uh, about how to treat children are the ones who don't have any children. That's from Bill Cosby. <laughs> Very interesting. And uh, so, uh, uh, Dreams in children are nourished in a family, and, 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 and failures are shared without condemnation and guilt. Uh, uh, a family has to act as a unit. Uh, Ninety percent, I've heard a quote that 90 percent of the families uh, who 
have some sort of problem. They may, on the surface, look like great, intact, wonderful families of 15, 20, 30 people. That's humanity. That's life. 90% of people, there's something going on, just different in different families. Uh, so expect problems. How, how you solve them is the uh, critical thing. So uh, don't just reject a child because of this, that, and the other. Try to work with them. But some are impossible situations, and I've seen it myself. And some are difficult. But you've got to address them, hug them. You know, you tell them you've got to change this, but then give them a hug, show them love. A lot of addiction in children, for example, uh, is due to uh, fear of the child. They have a constant fear. They, they're traveling down here. Uh, an addict, uh, uh, addict, uh, mother, father, brother, sister, society, God, and religion to an addict mean nothing. Zero. Zero. Because the serotonin and dopamine is down here. Remember we talked about the dopamine circuitry? But give the child a hug. They need some comfort and then get some counseling done. And, uh, and uh, uh, the children's brains are not developed. They're not properly developed not until age 25 or so. So they become easily addicted. If you have a child who smokes alcohol, marijuana, odds of becoming a drug addict, 82%. So you get to address the problems quickly, uh, uh, quickly because of the immature, the immature uh, uh, brain. And, uh, and Steve Covey would say, be proactive. Uh, look at the end. Look at the end. Show them the vision of the end. You're more likely to reach, to, uh, reach it. And uh, what kind of family do we want? What kind of a home do we want? Uh, uh, what makes you feel comfortable? What makes you want to come home? What makes you feel open to our influence? Uh, what are we trying to accomplish? What is our goal, Steve uh, uh, would say. Uh, so uh, families do better if they have a, a mission. Uh, first things first. Uh, think win-win. We can accomplish this, but stick together. Synergize. Root, route, and visualize the fruit, the product, and, uh, and develop a tradition in, in your family. So families are extremely uh, important. Uh, let's go on to number nine here. Make a commitment to continue education uh, throughout your life. Uh, keep a lamp burning. We need to uh, pour oil in it. Uh, at my tender age, 39, uh, here, uh, like I said, I read a book every three days. I retired in neurosurgery July 1, but I'm not going to be the medical wellness director at Lutheran. what I'm trying to do. I'm, I'm trying to keep my brain sharp, uh, obviously, uh, and, and uh, I eat the right food because uh, uh, obesity and diabetes causes sugar uh, to hook to protein deposits in the brain and causes dementia and memory loss very right head of dementia and people who have type 2 diabetes. So you've got to work at it. Do I exercise? Yes, that's important. Exercise my brain and my body. Weigh 139 pounds, and I try to exemplify what I'm trying to teach people. I didn't always weigh that. But I did a largely plant-based diet, maybe 80%. Uh, I wrote a book, Secret of the Non-Diet. You might like to read it. You can get it on Amazon about proper eating and exercise and mental and physical exercise. Uh, I, I work out seriously at, at Planet Fitness, and at, which I thank very much for charging only $9.99 per month. And I work out at Species, uh, and, uh, t uh, muscular-wise and aerobically, uh, so uh, to stay in good shape. These things are important uh, for good health. And, uh, and remember I said your brain can grow if you use it, it's called neuroplasticity. And number 10, show respect for all life, human and animal. And I'd like to make a little bit of a big point out of this. I mean, you see a lot of people respect human life to the nth degree, so even to the cellular level, but they shoot an animal any old time. Well, we can be disagreement about that, but I just don't agree with that. But, but with some, obviously, hunting we have to do. But, but, uh, but uh, think about it. Look at the, when I looked in the eye of a deer one time, that was it for me. And uh, that's life. That's life. And, uh, and, and they're God's creatures. Uh, look at your dog and your cat. I mean, really have a look at them. Uh, and uh, and uh, sometimes our lives, we don't really look at the children. We don't look at the trees. We don't look at the leaves. And we don't look at the animals, don't realize that they're connected to us. They are connected to us. Uh, and, and I say, uh, show them uh, respect. Show them uh, uh, respect. And, uh, so we can develop special bonds with the animal kingdom. I, I know I do with my cats and my dogs and, 
and, and many people do, many people do. And I think we should show some respect for animal life and, and not just uh, destroy it and respect their environment, uh, for example, and be loving to them. And, uh, and we do see some animal abuse, for example. Uh, very sad thing, very sad thing. And uh, number 11, avoid violence, practice nonviolence, uh, support peace. Uh, and, uh, and with that, I'm going to read you a, a couple of poems because uh, to me, I think they're, ver they're very uh, important, uh, uh, very important. Uh, avoid violence, practice nonviolence, support peace. But this is a very important poem to me. And in fact, it was read during the debate we had about the, the uh, Afghan war. And it was read there at the end of that conference. Lord, this is actually St. Francis of Assisi prayer. I visited Assisi. I'm not Catholic, but I visited Assisi, and I was awestruck uh, with that church in Italy. Lord, make me the instrument of your peace. Where there's hatred, let me love. Where there's injury, pardon. Where there's doubt, faith. Where there's despair, hope. Where there's darkness, light. Where there's sadness, joy. Grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console. To be understood as to understand. To be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive. It is in pardoning, pardoning, forgiving, that we are pardoned. And it is in dying that we are born into eternal life. That's the prayer of St. Francis, a good prayer to, to memorize. No matter what faith, religion you are, it makes no difference. Uh, I must say I visit that church where he's buried, and it, you could feel it in the air there. I could feel it uh, uh, in the air. Uh, so uh, I've participated in peace marches. Again, I've been in the courthouse with five different people. Uh, 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 and uh, and uh, I have, in this violence that we're seeing in the cities today, I've seen mothers that lost a child. I've seen criminals go into a house, had the wrong house, shoot the child, uh, and, and they meant to go next door. We see it today. Uh, and, 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 and like I said, I don't think there's nothing we can do about the guns out there, but we could change the behavior of everyone by teaching these prescriptions starting, say, in kindergarten at a young age. I even have a coloring, coloring book uh, written to it. Uh, which we spoke about uh, earlier. So uh, I, I think we need to do something uh, to reduce the violence in our community. We need to get all involved. We need to report when there are crimes. We need to report them. Uh, now I'm going to read you another uh, 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 poem here. And uh, uh, a prayer for peace. A prayer for peace. And uh, great God who had told us, vengeance is mine. Save us from ourselves. We're talking about today's violence, okay? Save us from the vengeance in our hearts and the acid in our souls. Save us from our desire to hurt as we have been hurt, to punish as we have been punished, to terrorize as we have been terrorized. We're talking about war, but we're talking about our cities also, our homes. Give us the strength it takes to listen rather than to judge to trust rather than to fear, to try and try again, to make peace even when peace eludes us. Take them to the UN uh, in, in these war, these war issues. Uh, and and uh, uh, the peace marches that we've had in this city have not accomplished much. And we were trying to push these prescriptions into the city and school system at this time. I hope this time they might listen. I hope this time maybe they will listen because nothing has gotten done. We have the same problem. We ask, O oh God, for the grace to be our best selves. We ask for our vision to be builders of the human community rather than its destroyers. We ask for the humility as a people to understand the fears and hopes of other peoples. We ask for the love it takes to bequeath to the children of the world to come more than the failures of our own making. We ask for the heart it takes to care for all the peoples, let's face it, these wars going on in other countries, do you think the average person is instant in war? No, they're trying to survive. They're trying to survive. Uh, uh, let's look at the people of Afghanistan, Iraq, Palestine, 
Israel, Egypt, Syria. Uh, what do you think the average person would like? Peace. They would like some peace, some food to eat. Uh, give us a death of soul, O God, to constrain our might, to resist the temptation of power, to refuse to attack the attackable, to understand that vengeance begets violence, and to bring peace, not war, wherever we go. Now we're thinking about going into Syria. Uh, look at these other wars, the, the injured, the deaths, the disabled veterans. Uh, uh, for you, O oh God, have been merciful to us. For you, O oh God, have been patient with us. For you, O oh God, have had been gracious to us. And so may be merciful and patient and gracious and trusting with these others uh, whom you also love. We ask God, the one without vengeance in his heart, we ask forever and ever. Amen. Uh, a very famous uh, prayer against violence. Uh, at least that's, uh, that's my opinion. It's important. Let's go into prescription number 12. Celebrate our differences, sex, race, race background, appearance, and disabilities. Of course, this is huge to me, huge to me, because I've always... Uh, and I don't remember my parents teaching it, but I've always been extremely respectful for race, culture, religion. I've always been this way. I am this way uh, uh, today. Uh, each, uh, give me some quotes here, too. Each person is different, a tribute to, to God's creativity. If we are to love our neighbor and ourselves, we must accept people as they are and not demand they can conform to our own image. Some people are different. Different ethnic groups come in with different uh, cultures. Uh, we all came in different ships, <laughs> but we're in the same boat now. <laughs> okay, I came on a ship myself. And uh, so grant that we may so much as seek to be understood as to understand. That's again from Assisi. The previous quote was from Martin Luther King. Uh, here's Benjamin Franklin. Who is wise? He that learns from everyone. Who learns from everyone. I enjoy speaking to to uh, uh, strangers. I tend to hang out at some of the coffee shops and I met a lot of different people and they got different stories. The last guy I met was a physicist here teaching from Oxford. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that was interesting. And uh, so uh, let's celebrate our differences. Let's celebrate our difference. Uh, genetically, you cannot even find a gene uh, for being a black or gray or whatever. There's no gene for it. Uh, so to me, I don't see the difference. We need to get over that. We shouldn't use it in any forms, black or white. Forget it. We're human living things. Forget it. And, uh, and, 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 and stop using these terms. Stop using these terms. And uh, I think it's critical. Uh, it, like uh, from Martin Luther King, I have a dream that one day on the hills of Georgia, the sons of former slaves and sons of former slave owners we'll be able to sit down together at the table of brotherhood. It is time. We've had progress, but it's still incomplete, as you can see in the recent uh, uh, stories. But we all must work together uh, to reduce this violence. Uh, and, uh, and, 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 uh, and looking backwards, unfortunately, it's not going to get a lot of things done. We need to look forwards. And that's the reason I think these uh, 20 prescriptions have a forward message to them, uh, a thing that could change uh, uh, very quickly. Uh, perhaps the clearest and deepest meaning of brotherhood is the ability to imagine yourself in the other person's position and then treat that person if you were him. Uh, this form of brotherhood takes a lot of imagination, a great deal of sympathy and a tremendous amount of uh, understanding. All right, let's move on so we can try to get, get through these here. And number 13, seek knowledge, wisdom, good character, and pursue excellence. We spoke before, uh, keep on learning, uh, go to school, learn all you can. Uh, Indiana has a great website uh, also uh, where you can go to, go to school uh, and learn about all the Indiana uh, dot, uh, learning dot com and, uh, and they have about 10,000 ways you could uh, go to school on the internet or colleges available to constantly improve yourself. Uh, uh, so, uh, but to develop a clear mind uh, let's go backwards a minute. I'm going to uh, read this to you a little bit, too. Uh, to develop a clear mind, you've got to be logical, okay? Do not believe what you have heard. Do not believe in tradition because it's handed down from generations. 
you may not agree with all this, but do not believe in anything that has been spoken just because it has spoken many times. Do not believe because the written statements come from some old sage like me. Uh, do not believe in conjecture. Do not believe in authority or teachers or elders, but after careful observation and analysis, when it agrees with reason, and it will benefit one and all, then accept it and live by it. That's a little step backwards here, but you, you can see the point. You can, you can see the point here. Uh, uh, and uh, 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 to be logical, you, you got on the, what you're hearing, it doesn't make sense. Uh, uh, let's uh, uh, move on a little bit. Uh, I don't want to miss one at the end, especially uh, about respecting the environment. Uh, 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 number 20. Uh, uh, I think we're destroying our environment largely today by cutting down trees and, and the food we're eating. Uh, uh, the food we're eating requires a tremendous amount of, uh, uh, amount of uh, chemicals. Uh, we put a tremendous amount of chemicals on our farms uh, and these chemicals are draining into the water and destroying our water system uh, and, uh, and restoring a lot of our environment is because we're eating too much fat, salt, and sugar. Uh, and, uh, th and this, this uh, uh, so I think you need to consider what, you, what you're eating. And when I walk through an environment, for example, I speak to the animals, I speak to the birds, I look at the flowers and the trees. Remember we spoke about that? Uh, and you need to uh, plant a tree, plant, plant a garden, plant an organic garden. So I, I think this is a, a, a very important. Another uh, one uh, uh, that I wanted to, to uh, mention to practice charity. Uh, and, and I think it's an important thing. I do a lot. If you look around town, you can see that, that indeed I have. It makes me feel good and it helps a lot of people uh, from anything from sports uh, to uh, public uh, access TV uh, to uh, uh, PBS, all things that I've since I'm uh, contributed to. And consider yourself. We all can uh, help uh, do, do, do uh, uh, some of this. So in summary, these 20 prescriptions I like to push into the school system. I like to uh, uh, th that uh, the children, us adults, could, could create a culture uh, of wellness, uh, a culture of a good life, from, from eating to exercising to having a sound brain, a less uh, illness, and a more peaceful community. I'm trying to create a more peaceful, healthy uh, community to develop a culture of wellness, a culture uh, of behavior, and that we respecting all races, respecting uh, all cultures. This could all be done through these 20 prescriptions. So you'd like to read a book on it. I wrote this book called The uh, uh, Call of Life, uh, which a chapter is written to every prescription, written to every prescription there, and there's some great stories in there uh, uh, to read, uh, a book I read uh, 15 years ago. I also have a song in back. It comes with a CD. Jeff Benward, a famous uh, songwriter and singer, uh, wrote a song to it. Uh, and, and it comes uh, uh, with the book, uh, and, uh, and, and I'm selling ideas here, and that book's ideas. Uh, and it's a very melodious song. I played it in my uh, car again <laughs> today. And, and uh, I think, uh, and it's at a uni performer, it's choir, I even did a rap song to it. Uh, and we noticed when we had them on stage the other day for the celebration of the life of, of uh, uh, Jackson and, uh, uh, at the Civic Theater recently, we noticed that the kids, uh, now adults in their 20s had the prescriptions memorized. They were not warned they'd be quizzed about them. And Marshall got on stage and asked these uh, uh, 20, 20 now adults up there, our former children in the choir, uh, and, and would say, uh, you know, number six, read a book regularly. Number 20, respect the environment. They were all in their brain. They memorized their children. Did their behavior change? Yes. These kids were now lawyers and doctors and, and uh, many of them successful. So, so they had tremendous impact on their lives. So anyway, thank you very much for listening uh, to me tonight. Uh, if you have ideas, look me up. I'll have a cup of coffee with you or read a book you want me to read. And, uh, and we love you all. We love uh, Fort Wayne and the surrounding area and counties who gave me the opportunity to, to practice medicine with them. And I'll uh, see if I can continue uh, with my new uh, uh, job, uh, Director of Wellness, uh, to work on, on uh, all these issues further. This is a wonderful community, uh, and, uh, and we're doing something about it to make it even better. And I appreciate the help of uh, many people who are helping me. And uh, we love you all. Namaste.